Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic today is alien invasion in the Bible. What? You know the Bible talks about an alien invasion? Stay tuned. Alien invasion in the Bible. Now, I'm going to start out. I know this may sound a little unusual because I'm not, I haven't even met all of you, but in the spirit, I feel like I've met you. So I just want to say I love you. I look forward to the time when, even though we may have never met, I look forward to the time when I finally get to meet you in heaven, when we can spend eternity together and talk, <laughs> talk about all these things. Of course, the Bible says there'll be a day that, that it'll come to where we won't remember anything in this lifetime. But nevertheless, we'll still know each other as, we, as they are known. So I just want to say I love you. I appreciate you listening and, and all the other things, you know, subscribing and all that sort of stuff. And yes, it's summertime and it's always a slow time in the summer. So those of you that God has blessed, if you could help us, we would really appreciate it. But anyway, the, the thing I wanted to say is I love you. I look forward to eternity together with you. Okay, so alien invasion in the Bible. First of all, I'm going to start with a new dream from uh, Vicky Goforth Parnell. And I can tell you right up front, this one has a lot of editing because she talks about the color of the clothing and other things that are, are, in my opinion, not the point that God is trying to get across. So, here you go. 6.13.23, she said, The dream started with me hearing the words, The time of demon revelation is here. The time of demon revelation is here. Then I heard again. The time of demon revelation is here. The time of demon alien revelation is here. So that's three, really four times. Again, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. When God speaks like that, he is screaming at us. I believe he's screaming at us. And I believe it because it's probably very close. Let's go on. I see a man slowly begin, begin moving as if in slow motion, then into full speed. He's screaming in horror and terror. He's running quickly through a park. I hear people running in all directions. I look to the sky and I saw a black triangle object spaced apart in various locations. They covered a vast area. There were, there were, there were more uh, a very distance away, drawing closer to us. These objects frighten the people, and it is happening all over the world, or will soon to follow, if not now. I felt great evil, and that the darkness of their color was fog, shielding them from full sight. I heard a woman screaming, it's an alien invasion, while running fast into the trees. A man cries out, UFOs, they're finally here, but was frightened, but to stood in an awe of the scene. He was wearing military name tags, and the man takes out a pair of dark black sunglasses, speeds off in a green Hummer. The objects in the sky are drawing closer and bigger into my view. Great evil is inside them. Then I heard, and I shall give them over to strong delusion. The time of the demon revelation is here. The time of the demon alien revelation to your world is here. Do not be deceived by what you see or hear. Strong delusion has come. Aliens have come to your world. Aliens to your world have come. Your world government shall announce. Be wary of words of deception spoken by unclean lips. Trust me only. Trust in my Holy Spirit alone. The time of the de demon alien revelation has come to the earth. Woe to you inhabitants. Woe unto you. Then I woke. Now, this is really serious. I cannot, you know, nobody likes to hear these words. I told you so, okay? And I, I really struggled with, with, with whether I wanted to say those words to you today. But in this case, I think it's a confirmation that you know that I believe and if you believe like I believe, if you believe in the Bible, you're going to believe what she said, what she heard was really of God. So I have to say, I told you so. You know, I've been doing Prophecy Club since 1993. So 
This is June 93, as a matter of fact, when it started. So here it is. I guess this is our 30th anniversary of Prophecy Club starting. I wish I'd made note of the exact date, but I didn't. Anyway, June of 1993. And in all that time, I have been in the back of my heart, so to speak, suspected this would happen. We're aliens from another planet. As a matter of fact, I've even put it out in several of our prayer requests to our Fast Track team. If you remember that, you know what I'm talking about. This is going to be the great deception. And sad to say, the only ones that are not going to believe it are the ones that have read the Bible, specifically Revelation chapter 13. The only ones that are not going to take the mark of the beast are those people that have read and believe Revelation 13. They have been warned about the mark of the beast. This is coming. Stan, you're saying that it's in the Bible. Yes, I believe it's in the Bible, but it's not exactly as direct as she got here. But I'm going to show you why I believe it is in the Bible. First of all, this is another one of the things that tells me that Vicki really is hearing from God. Every one of her dreams or visions, now again, I, I don't go in for pretty, pretty much anybody's prophetic words, Dreams, visions, angel visits, audible voices, yes. But words from the Lord, I, I question, because in most cases, they have lots of flesh to them. But in every one of these where she's had a dream, she says, the Lord gives me these verses. I look up the verses, maybe not all of them, but enough of them to know either she really has a fantastic grip on her understanding of the Bible, which I don't believe is the case. Now, that's not saying she doesn't know the Bible. I think she does. But I think that the scriptures that she's able to pull up, to me, are above human, that she could have that kind of an understanding. In this case, for this God, I'm going to come back to this one, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they might all be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I'll come back to it and explain it. These are the verses she says God gave her, and I believe her. I also choose their, their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. And boy, that's true today. You know, I, I just emailed somebody, and somebody had like 450,000 subscribers saying the same thing Prophecy Club is saying, but because they're saying it from secular sources, people believe them, people receive them. But when they say a prophet said it, or it's in the Bible, nah, 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 we don't want to hear none of that stuff. Sad to say, they don't want to hear what God says in most cases. So if you're listening right now, you're among the minority. Let me read it again. I also will choose their delusions. Delusions, in other words, the lies that they believe, and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But when they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things? Prudent, and he shall know them. In other words, those people that know their Bible, that do know their Lord, that are filled with the Holy Ghost, especially with evidence speaking in tongues, it's not hard to convince them of this. They understand it. They understand it because the Spirit in here is confirming it. But to people that don't know that, it's just like they won't believe the Bible, they won't accept Jesus, they certainly aren't filled with the Holy Spirit because the Spirit of God is not in them. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. These are the scriptures God gave her. Okay, It would be hard for you to just normally look these up. You have to have a supernatural understanding of the Bible to find all of these, make them all fit together with what she was given. Hosea 12.10, I've also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied divisions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Now, <laughs> What was just said in that verse is a lot. My guess is, to most of us, it went over our heads. So let me explain. I've also spoken by the prophets. Well, that's what Prophecy Club tries to bring you. I've also multiplied visions. In other words, he's spoken through us, through the prophets, through visions, through dreams, and used similitudes. Now, what's a similitude? 
Well, it's like Leslie talking about Leslie and I were in a boat. We already had fish in our boat, and all of a sudden, fish started jumping out of the mud from every direction into our boat. The mud represented the, the filth of the world. Our boat represented the ministry. And that we already had fish in our boat means we had already won some to the Lord, but there's going to come a time when they're jumping in our boat from all directions during the time of trouble. So a similitude is speaking in ways that the average person just can't understand it. But of course, through the Spirit, to us it's plain as day. By the ministry of the prophets. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits or aliens, uh, some shall depart from, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Hebrews 13, 9. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. When you have the Spirit of God in you, it's not hard to believe and understand these things. Now, let me go to the scriptures I believe are hinting at there will be an alien invasion. And by that I mean that we will actually see spaceships in the sky. I've never seen one, but I believe that I probably will in my lifetime. I've never seen a real alien, but I probably will. I've never seen some high technology device but I probably will. How, why do I say that? Oh, here, there's one more scripture group that this comes from Vicki. Acts 2, 16. But this is that which was spoken of the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall see visions, and your, old, your, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now, here's the point. I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. I'm not going to get into explaining all that. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whomsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a whole message right there, but I'm going to skip on for right now. So, to my question. Is an alien invasion spoken of in the Bible? I'm going to say yes, well, sort of. Here's why I say that. Now, I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to explain it to you. Daniel chapter 7, verse 4, starts with a lion that had eagle's wings. This is England, from which America came out of, and of course our symbol is the eagle. The second uh, beast was like unto a bear. That's the Russians. These, these are talking about the last superpowers. So the next nation that arose was the Russian bear. The third nation that will arise, it's already in the pro process of rising right now, is the leopard. We see, for example, like Saudi Arabia is walking away from America and it's in league now with Iran and some other nations. So the leopard is now in process of forming. Then the fourth beast, which is world government. This is the point here. So the fourth beast is dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. Now, first of all, these are all beasts, which we know are actually nations. However, this last one relates to the mark of the beast, the image of the beast. Dreadful, terrible, strong exceedingly. It had great iron teeth. Iron is the Roman kingdom. So this is speaking of a nation that rises specifically out of Europe. Why? Because America has already started to fall, and as America falls, we will see Europe rise up. But that's not the point yet. Then there came up among them another little horn. There's your Antichrist. The Antichrist is the little horn. Before whom he overcomes three of the first horns that will form a ten-nation global confederacy out of the seven continents, ten nations. Then there will come up an eleventh one. Okay, over here, that little horn. That's the Antichrist. The Antichrist will then overcome three of the other nations, and he will become the eighth, okay? He is the eighth and of the seven. That's from another place. Three of the horns plucked up by the roots, and in this horn, like the eyes of a man, and here's how we know it's talking about the Antichrist. He has a mouth speaking great things. Right there. You find that same words here, right down here at the bottom. 
a mouth speaking great things. All right, now let's go to Revelation 13. I'm not going to explain all of it, but essentially here's what it says. He says, He saw a beast rise up out of the sea, which is people. It's seven heads or seven continents divided into ten global regions. Same thing Daniel says. Ten global regions. Each one of those global regions has a ruler. Each one of them has crowned, and they blaspheme God. So it's a, an evil world government. Then he sees a leopard, that's the Muslims, Russian bear, and the English lion. Same three. The dragon gives them, or the devil, gives them a power seat and great authority. He, the devil, sets up this world government. Then it confirms what Daniel says. I saw one of his heads, which would be the eleventh one that overcome the other three, as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Now, we do not know if he actually dies and comes back to life, or if he appears to die. It doesn't make any difference. All the world considers that this is the guy that came back to life, which is the thing that makes all of the world uh, turn to the guy, because, you know, he came back to life. Now, Jesus came back to life, but the world doesn't accept that. But this guy, they'll all accept. Now, we're getting close to it. The dragon... They worshipped the beast. Who gave the, <clears throat> the dragon gave power into the beast. Okay, well, hang on. Is a dragon, could that be an alien? Could that be a UFO? Absolutely. Or could it be some of those people that, remember the, 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 the dragon, his tra tail drew a third part of the stars and did cast them to the earth? So that's saying that Lucifer put forth a tail. I don't think it's this kind of a tail. I think it's this kind of a tale, a lie. He lied to all of the angels of the earth. This is before Adam and Eve were created, before the earth was created. He lied to all of the other angels, and a third of them believed his lie. And they were cast down to the earth. Now, could it be that they didn't lose all of their intelligence? And could it be that they knew that a person should be able to fly, or in their case, a being should be able to fly? And so they used their brains and their high technology to then develop anti-gravity, interdimensional objects that can fly through time and space. Could it be that they've actually created, and perhaps even for centuries, had devices that can fly through the heavens? And by the way, in, in the scriptures talk about I can go into that, but it'll get me off the, off the target if, if, I, if I talk about that. But essentially, there is flesh that is terrestrial, outside, in space. The Bible talks about it. There are also terrestrial, in other words, those li that live on the earth and under the earth. So, like one person said, uh, told me he had been all through Area 51, he said, yes, they have anti-gravity uh, flying vehicles, some from other planets, some our nation has created, but some of them also come from beneath the Earth. As a matter of fact, it may be that more of them are beneath the Earth than out, uh, some other planet someplace. But the point is, when it says the dragon gave them their power and they worshiped the beast, then it says a mouth speaking great things. Specifically, God gives the Antichrist a mouth, the ability to speak fantastic things, so that through those words he's able to deceive. As in, you know, when the thousand years was, he's locked up into the in the the, uh, the 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 bottomless pit, and then he's loose for a little season, where he goes out to deceive the nations, or in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, the number of him is as the sand of the sea. And they went upon the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, devoured them. Okay, so that all happens at the end of the millennium. However, before he gets locked up in the, 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 the bottomless pit, he is going to have all kinds of deceptions. So what this is saying is the Antichrist has been given a mouth speaking great things. He is going to be <coughs> the best-looking, the best-sounding human flesh. Or he's the one who would be totally human flesh. I believe he would be half man, half Lucifer, genetically. I believe that the way he will work, he will be half flesh and also at least connected, and maybe even half robot, some kind of, but 
he will be he will have access to all knowledge from the devil from the humans everything and he is going to have the answer to everything now let's go on make i got a couple more points to make here so skipping on down revelation 13 13 he does great wonders this is the false prophet yes the false prophet is flesh but how does he do the great wonders could it be that it's not just flesh doing it? I don't think it is. I think it's connected with some of the high technology which has been given to them from what we might call an alien or a UFO. If you want to call it the devil or Lucifer or the, something like that, it probably is. So he doeth great wonders. So he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That could very well be associated with aliens. And he deceives them that dwell on the earth, that's us, by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the first beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. In my opinion, that's some kind of like a clone. That's a half man, half Lucifer, half man, half alien, half man, half machine, however they build that all together. But the image of the beast then speaks. That's part of his being given a mouth that speaks great things. He speaks and causes everybody on the, worship, on the world to worship the Antichrist. If they don't worship the Antichrist, then off with their head. But Stan, does that really prove that there's aliens? Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you a specific verse that says, yep, there's aliens out there. There is a verse that says that there's flesh, terrestrial, and I probably should have looked that up, but anyway, there's one out there. All right, let me go on. Here's the big one, though. And then shall that wicked, <laughs> okay, that wicked, what's it talking about? Talking about the Antichrist. Then that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, that's the morning star, and he shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Well, Satan's not human. Okay, so that right there, we could say it's talking about aliens. Working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. High technology. It's not only things in the spirit he can do, but it's also high technology. Probably they do have anti-gravity. Flying machines, time machines, spirit-sucking machines that can actually pull the spirit out of a person as they sleep. Other sources say that they can pull the spirit out of a person dies, they take that spirit and they can put it into another cloned body, which explains a whole lot of things, but I'm not going into that right now. Then, all, Satan is all power, science, and lying wonders. With all deceivableness, what does that mean? It means that they can deceive with every possible way that at their, their, at their means, let's put it that way, of unrighteousness. So they use lies, and righteousness is lies. Lies to deceive. And then they perish. Because they would not receive the fact that Jesus is Lord. They would not receive his blood that dripped on the Ark of the Covenant. They would not believe the Bible. They would not worship him because God did everything he could to try to get them to get saved. Because they would not receive the blood of Jesus, because they would not receive the true Messiah, he says, okay, we'll give you the anti-Messiah, or we'll give you the Antichrist, same thing. So, because they received not the love of the truth that they might should be saved, then God, so who allows the aliens to come? It's God. Who sends the strong delusion? It is God. So God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they might all be damned who, who received, who believed not the truth, but had that pleasure in unrighteousness. So because some of them absolutely will not receive the blood of Jesus, he says, okay, you don't want what I sent you that is free. It, you can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't work hard enough. It's a free gift. All you have to do is believe that Jesus rose from the dead and that should be saved. With a heart, man, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, his, his confession is made unto salvation. All a person has to do is ask Jesus to forgive their sins, ask him to come into their heart and be their God. It's as simple as that. The man on the cross next to Jesus simply said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. It doesn't take a big, long, fancy prayer. What it does take is for you to say, I'm not accepting the Lucifer, the devil, the evil. I'm not accepting that way of life. I'm not doing that way of life anymore. Instead, I want to do things right. I'm turning to good. I'm turning to Jesus. I want to live my life right. And then you accept this so that all of a sudden now the Spirit of God comes into you. And when these lying signs and wonders start coming up, when the sky is filled with these flying saucers or however they might come out, when they come out and they say, oh, okay, we, we're finally here, we're friendly, and we're going to give you all kinds of high technology. We're going to give you a med bed machine. You can land a machine in three minutes, and it puts back if you had a leg blown off in the war, if you had teeth pulled out. If you don't have any hair, you want to change the color of your hair, you want to take away all of the wrinkles, all of the gray hair, you want to be 30 again, uh, you want to never die again. We're going to give you that. We're going to give you uh, anti-gravity. We're going to give you free energy. We're going to give you all. We're going to, get, we're going to bless you so much. Uh, and then once they've done that, they say, uh, we hear people talking about this Jesus guy. We've got to straighten you out on that. And they're going to say something along the order of, this guy Jesus, he's not the real guy. See, I, 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 I won't even say the words because I don't even believe them. I'm not going to say them. But they will come against, again, how does it say? He was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Powers given him continue 42 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. So he's going to be speaking out in such a way that most people that have not already accepted Jesus will believe the lie and be damned. And that's the reason, if you have loved ones and you're thinking, oh, well, you know, when the trouble gets real bad, they'll, they'll accept Jesus. You know, he, the earthquake hit or the dollar falls apart or the suitcase nukes hit, they, they, then they'll, they'll receive Jesus. If you're thinking that, uh, think another thing. Because if they have not already accepted Jesus, by the time they see aliens in the sky, by the time they come down and they are the answer to mankind. They're going to have the answer to everything. And they are going to appear, they're, they're going to come out with, I mean, the AI, as I talked about yesterday, the AI, the artificial intelligence, the computer, comes out with a new Bible, a new God, a new way of salvation. You, you don't have to accept Jesus to live forever. Just get in our med bed over here. We can give you eternal life. And they can. In this body. Problem is, you don't want to live in this body. You want to live in this world. So I'm only saying the Bible does, does not directly say you'll see aliens. If you expect it to say it that direct, it doesn't. But indirectly, it's the only thing that could fulfill all of the scriptures it's talking about. So, yeah, the Bible does say that aliens are going to come. It does say that wicked is going to rule the world with all power and signs and lying wonders. Let's talk about Joseph Kitchen. I actually cooked this loaf of bread you're seeing here. It takes me about 10 minutes to put the ingredients together, put it into a bread machine, push a button, two hours, 20 minutes later, I get a loaf of bread out like that. Now, if you cut that loaf of bread that weighs about three pounds, the loaves you get in the store have most of the good stuff removed. The loaves you get in the store are about a pound. That's three pounds because it's got the good stuff still in it. Cut that into 14 slices. And if I eat a slice in the morning and the afternoon, I'm satisfied. So on that basis, one loaf can sustain, I didn't say it's everything we want, can sustain a person, one person for a week. Based upon that, it'll get you Excellent nutrition. It tastes good. Long storage life. 10 minutes to combine the ingredients. 2 hours, 20 minutes to make it. Other wheat that you order arrives in paper bags, which means bugs, rice, and humidity can get a hold of it and ruin it. But at Joseph Kitchen, they send it out in 100 mil thick buckets. Gives you long shelf life. It's stackable. It's nitrogen infuses that hopefully gives it a lot much longer shelf life, kills bugs and things like that. Easily resealable. Keep in a climate controlled area. 
and they have it in stock. This is a picture, an actual picture of part of the warehouse. Here's another picture of the, these. Actually, each one of those boxes holds 2,500 pounds of wheat. And I think they've got 54 of those boxes, a bunch of them. So Joseph's Kitchen can ship it to you right now. You go to most of these places, they say out of stock. So here's what you want to do. Everybody needs to get a machine package. These are the things that you need to grind the wheat berries. Put them into a grinder. 30 seconds later, you have flour. You put that into the bread machine along with six other ingredients. Push about two hours, 20 minutes later, you have a nice hot loaf of whole wheat bread. Then you have to decide how much food you want. You want food two people one year, four people one year, six people one year. And if you want to make certain you have it when the electricity goes down, you can also get yourself a solar generator all at josephskitchen.com josephskitchen.com Terry Saka with cornerstoneassetmetals.com So what's going on in the world of finances? Why should they call today? Well, China has laid out in a speech a few weeks ago exactly what they think of the United States. I haven't seen that in my 55 years. With China and Russia forming these reserve currencies, new reserve currency, we better be prepared because that dollar is going to be in deep trouble and we're going to need assets to protect us from it. CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. Call them or go online. CornerstoneAssetMetals.com or call them at 888-747-3309. 888-747-3309. Next is, I'll send you to EMPShield.com. If you use the promo word Prophecy, you get a $50 discount. What is that? Well, it looks like this. This is the one that goes into a car, okay? And you put the red wire to the red side of the battery. You put the black wire to the black side of the battery. And the green one attaches to the body of the car. Then you peel it off right back here. Just peel that off. Stick it inside of the, 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 the engine compartment of your car. And the whole point is when the electricity goes off or when some kind of a suitcase nuclear, nuclear device goes off, this is supposed to be able to stop that device from destroying every computer chip in your car. Because if every computer chip is destroyed in your car these days, you couldn't possibly replace them all. Throw the car away. So, empshield.com, promo code PROPHECY. I am having another level two. Level two, School of the Watchman's Conference, and I'm calling this a teacher's course. It's going to be September 15 and 16. You can go to prophecyclub.com, and it'll tell you all of the details about it. And it gives you all of the requirements. I'll let you read that online. However, the big question is, you're going to be saying, well, what's the difference between level one and level two? Well, lots. Level one was primarily reading through most of the book of Revelation and teaching it. That's not be level two. Yes, we will do some reading. But this one is designed to make you a teacher of Bible prophecy, which, by the way, our office wants to know if you went through level one and if you have taught or have been invited to teach from the book of Revelation and you went through level one, send me an email. I'd like to know that. I know there's been at least one. I think there's two, maybe more. Anyway, I'd like to know. So level two is to teach you to the point to where you can be qualified to actually teach the book of Revelation. Now I'm going to tell you right up front, we're going to have a level three, God willing. And in that one, I'm going to require people to memorize the book of Revelation to come to level three. And so there's going to be one year's difference between level two and level three. It took me a year to memorize it. So I figure it'll take you a year to memorize it. Some of you may even faster. So go to prophecyclub.com and it'll give you all the details, tells you all about some of the difficult questions and things like that we're going to cover in level two. Level two is going to get you real close to being a, a qualified teacher of Revelation. But by the time you get through level three, having memorized the book, pastor's going to listen to you. And that's where we're going with this. Also, I'd recommend you go, you know, go and get yourself a Berkey water filter. And yes, we do have Berkeys all in stock now. Uh, also, we have potassium iodate pills, which are what you take inside of once a radioactive unit 
has happened in your area. As far as uh, Berkey water filters, this is one thing you want to be sure to do is get some extra filters. This is the minimum most people will get is this one right here. I get the Crown Berkey right here. This is the one I have, this one I use. And I have about eight extra filters with me too because if you're using clean water, they'll last a year or two. But if you're using rainwater or muddy water, then they clog up a whole lot faster. So you want to have some extra filters.